Hey, so uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, something I saw on Twitter today, and it's something that you kind of see a lot when you talk about like the living wage or like raising the minimum wage or anything like that. And it's something you usually see, right? You see someone talk about like trying to get fifteen dollars an hour, which I want to like put out right now. That's not nearly enough. That's not that's not a living wage. It's not nearly enough. But I do want to talk about how when you do put that up or you see someone talk about that, the kind of response is generally either it's one of two things. It's one, oh man, they haven't earned that much or their job is not worth that much because of the market and, and bull crap like that. But another thing that you'll see is you'll see someone say that they'll bring up another job, another profession that is also not paid a living wage. Like for example, an EMT, I think that was the example you see here. They're paid fourteen dollars an hour, and like they said that okay, so why should they deserve fifteen? And usually, you know, the responses are generally like, well, you know, they can go, you know, organize for their raising of the minimum of their of their wage of their salary, you know, but that doesn't conflict with what's happening here. But I, and like it's easy to kind of like just kind of like shoo it away, but I want to kind of talk about that from like a almost sociological perspective, like, why is that such a common response? Like, that's really, really common for them to bring up some some service member or some some uh, profession that is not paid enough and compare it as if, like, it's a competition, right? I, I, I think I really want to focus on that. Like, they, it's, it's brought up as if, as if only certain professions can get a living wage and therefore it should be the most deserving, even though that's not even how... It works now, right? You have, you know, professions that, like, paid millions of dollars and professions that, like, not even close to being enough to living. And both of them have very different impacts when it comes to, like, how how necessary it is for society. Um, and the reason I and, 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 and was, I, I bring this up is because I don't believe, like, I, I, I don't believe it's just people really not getting it or necessarily people hating poor people, right? No, I, I think those definitely factors into it. I think that's definitely one of the biggest, bigger factors. However, I think there's a reason why that, 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 uh, retort, that rebuttal is so common. And so when you think about it, right, who, who, who gets hurt? like when a big company, a really big company, like has to pay their, their workers living wage, who's hurt in that interaction? Now you could, you could argue that, okay, well in, in the market economy, they'll have to raise the price of the goods and therefore it'll be harder for, uh, um, people to buy and it's going to hurt the business and her job growth, right? But but the thing is, like, the only ones uh, on a fundamental level, right, who it hurts is the people at the top, the CEOs. It hurts their, their paycheck, their salary, how much money they can make, how much profit they generate a at the very base level. Everything else is kind of a consequence of that because, you know, we allow this to happen. But that's never brought up. What's brought up is always a profession that has no relation to it as if for whatever reason you giving or however how much money someone makes there it comes out a consequence of someone else somewhere over there but like i think the reason why that's that's brought up that way is because there's an idea that there's only so much out there right there's there's only a limited amount of money and only so many people can get it and it's already assumed that the people that are rich like they deserve it, right? Like, people who are rich already deserve what they get. And now it's kind of up to everyone else to kind of vie for the scraps. And I think that's... When you when, when people like class consciousness, that's, just, that's the idea. The idea is that you are in competition with the person next to you. When in reality, you should be in coordinates with the person. Like, when you think about it, it would make sense. It would make more sense to be like, okay, well, let's... If, 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 if you just see, say, the union workers and say, hey, these people were able to get sort of material gains for that maybe we could follow their footsteps or even have you know coalition with them in order to get our to gain our you know material but like gains but it's never thought about that way it's always thought about that oh wait they got those gains that means i'll get less even 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 if there's no real way to prove that there's an internal feeling of they have this but that means that that means there's one less out there for me and you know i think that's very much built into the system i think that's very much I think it's very, very, very much on purpose. Like I don't think it's just an accident that that's that that arguments brought up in that way. It very much comes from this the the idea that we're raised that we're in competition with everyone else, but not the bosses, not the CEOs, not the CFOs, not.
they're the people who make all the money. And I think that's something we, we only really combat with class consciousness. But that's the video. Peace.